like the t greatest 24-7 champion has said, what's up? This is the first edition of NXT Hangover. It's, it kind of works out. Second biggest show of the year, SummerSlam. And we're debuting our second show on the Jobberknocker Network. I'm DQ. This is my big bro, uh, TJ. And uh, we're going to chat about uh, NXT TakeOver a little bit because he's, you know, our expert. Yeah, I mean, it, it completely made sense to do this instead of just writing up a complete recap because we all know that TakeOver is the number one program. I mean, it's better than pay-per-view 90% of the time. And last night was no exception. Yep. Um, so let's start from the top of the show. Uh, as JC would say, super hot fire tag team match. Uh, we had the Street Profits versus O'Reilly and Fish Undisputed Era. What's your biggest takeaway? Um, I mean, right off the bat, I mean, the the – Street Pop has jumped out wearing Raptors uniforms, like throwbacks. Like, I was like, that's really awesome. But it was a really, it had a slow start to it, but it really picked up and turned mm -hmm. out to be an outstanding matchup. Um, Montez Ford was really, he was, you know, pretending to be the rock for the beginning. So he did the, or he tried for the people's elbow, land a rock bottom at one point. Uh, but it was an outstanding match overall. I was really shocked at the finish, though. Definitely thought that the Undisputed Era was going to walk away with that, but it set the pace for the rest of the night, really. My, my biggest takeaway, and it might be because I'm kind of on and off with NXT, um, Angelo Dawkins is a beast. Yeah. Um, he I, feel, I feel like he's the forgotten man in that team, but he, he, he towered over friggin' O'Reilly and Fish, which they're not the, guys, but he's, he, he was huge. That, and I mean, he's not really known, like he's not the athlete in that, in that mm -hmm. team by any means, um, but he definitely rocked it. I mean, he nailed a couple of huge spears. Um, he had he had the big comeback that led up to Montez Ford getting the tag to get the win, too. Um, there was a really cool spot in that, too, that I really enjoyed. Uh, O'Reilly had an Achilles lock on on uh, Montez Ford, and then he spine-bustered uh, Bobby Fish right on top of him. It was really cool. Um, lots, of lots of unique tag team breakups in NXT yeah. lately. We've seen a lot of, like, spears that knock into people. And it's pretty exciting. I love the uh, – I love the, the – was it the dragon sleeper into the blockbuster? Yeah. Um, O'Reilly had him in the, and uh, Dawkins in the, in the uh, dragon sleeper. And oh, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. But then, I mean, that match really started off because you're the whole time we were thinking that the undisputed era would be draped in gold by the end of the night. And the first match, they're not like, you realize it's not going to happen. So at that point I, you know, I doubted if even Adam Cole was going to walk away with a victory. Right. Um, um, Cole. So next up was, what I thought was the steal the show, the best match of the night was Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae. I love heel Io. Heel Io, I mean, it's, everything it's, from the, it's the great. entrance to the, the lighting to just the black and white, outstanding about it. Like, yeah. she is something else. This was, you know, I used the coming out party for Monta, or uh, Angela Dawkins. Like, this was Io, heel Io, Io's big sign. I mean, uh, it's, it's a move that's done quite a bit now. But the avalanche Spanish fly was unreal. She got crazy height. And I mean, give credit to Candice LeRae, too, because that's, that's got to be a, a tough move to do. I mean, we yeah. saw Sin Cara blow it a bazillion times when he started. <sighs> yeah, don't start with that. Um, but I mean, it was Candice LeRae's first big match, too. I mean, he has been on the takeover scene. Uh, mm -hmm. Candice has only done a couple of the pre shows that end up on NXT TV. But this was a big match for her. And the thing that got me that I was really excited, and I've said it on Twitter a bunch of times, uh, the wives of wrestlers usually get cheers. So we hear a lot of Candice wrestling. Mm -hmm. We hear uh, the poor uh, Deanna Perrazzo gets the woo woo chance from uh, the villain Marty Skrull. This one was Candice's match. Like, it was all about Candice. They were chanting Candice. Like, it was a great match for her. Um, it got a lot of, uh, it got a, a couple of This Is Awesome chants, a couple of Mamma Mia chants. Um, it was definitely, if you don't like near falls, like this was not a match for you by any means, <laughs> but it was a match. Like I stood up and clapped my wife's like, what are you doing? Like, this was outstanding. Like this was the match of the night. Like, yeah. and I tweeted, I knew a guardian was going to be the number one match of my night, but I did not think it would be Candice. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, next up was a really real you know, uh, messy brawl with Killian Dane and Matt Riddle. I really oh, didn't yeah. know anything from me. Like, bro. We'll see where that <laughs> bro. I don't know, we're recording this one. But, but, by by the way, a... did you see Matt Riddle in Mia Yim's entrance? <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, you can see he's not wearing shoes. It's fantastic. 
I'll have to take a look at that one. But it really didn't do anything for me. It was, I mean, it was a brawl. It is what it is. Building. Um, we'll see where it goes. It'll probably be a uh, lead up to the next takeover, but that's a long way away. Mm-hmm. Um, next up was a triple threat match for the North American Championship between Velveteen Dream, Pete Dunne, and Roderick Strong. Um, what do you, you think expect, of Velveteen Dream? Did you expect entrance? anything less? What was that? What do you think of Velveteen Dream's entrance? I liked it. I liked that the there was the Mountie reference. Um, yes. Anytime they reference the Mountie in WWE now, it's um, a uh, Hall of Fame moment don't, for me. Don't bring, don't bring him up to Kevin Owens, though. If you ever listen to a podcast with Kevin Owens on it, he's not a fan of him because he was trained by him. Um, but, uh, yeah, I liked it. I just I like how he has a special entrance all the time. And the fun, funny thing about that is usually when people get a special entrance, they're losing. But he got a special entrance and still won. Yeah, and I mean, it was a good match. I mean, I go into these, the dream matches now, and I'm like, all right, who is he going to emulate? Who is he going to, you know, pull moves from? There's Bret Hart, obviously, being in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't, I mean, that gimmick doesn't really do much for me. It doesn't hurt him. Doesn't, you know, it's not a big thing. This is a really easy, cheap pop. Yep. Sorry, I have SummerSlam on behind me, so. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. The, um, it was, so that spot with the coast-to-coast elbow drop was unreal. Yeah. Like, I was... It kind of caught me off guard. He missed it. I mean, he, you know, fell a little short. He uh, looked like he was a kid jumping off a couch, but it still was a really cool move it, nonetheless. It, it was what I expected it to be. It was a yeah. solid match. Lots of backbreakers, lots of finger breaking. Like, it, it, it was what I expected. It was solid. It was a great piece. I think, I think it was in a great spot on the card, too. Yeah, no, it was right in the middle. Um, and, I mean, it was definitely going to be one of those matches that we all knew was going to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about the dream of stopping the three count by grabbing the ref's hand? Because uh, love- Meltzer was on uh, Twitter trashing it. I, I always like when people do different things to break up the – to break it up. I mean, the the jumping in and, and interrupting is kind of – it's – It's over time. Everybody does it, yeah. So, yeah, I mean – I just he- thought – I thought stopping the arm was a cool thing. Like, I, I don't know. I can't – I don't remember seeing it. I'm sure Ness will correct I, me and give me some stat. But. I, like, I liken it to uh, Kevin Owens getting the uh, ring break at the WrestleMania we went to. One with pinky. Finger. Yeah. <laughs> one finger. <laughs> one finger on the rope. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I like the way that Dream won it. He just, you know, nailed the elbow drop out of nowhere. Um, right. Sometimes when that happens, it's kind of like, where the hell did that happen? But he came out of nowhere and got the win. So. So next up was the controversial match. A lot of people really did not like this one. Is that Sheena Baszler versus Mia Yim? Um, thoughts? I think in our private conversation between all the jobber knocker people, I think I think it was JC that said that the botch kind of took everybody out of it, and they were kind of, it was kind of unreasonable. I thought the match was really good storytelling, and I I, I say it all the time. Shayna Baszler is probably one of the best talents in NXT right now and um I mean you're gonna you look at Gargano and and Undisputed Era but Shayna's right up there and I I didn't like her in the Mae Young classic because I thought they were kind of shoving her down our throats because she was Ronda's buddy but like she's proven time and time again that she can put together solid matches and I love that it's it's her finisher has pretty much become like the RKO just like out of nowhere which is fantastic yeah no Definitely. I think one thing that I thought like you mentioned it, like the storytelling in it was really good. Um, I think Mia Yim was showing that she would do whatever it takes. I mean, she took out the other horse women. She was, I mean, at one point she was grabbing hair and fish hooking and doing some heel tactics as a face, which I thought was really interesting. But uh, I mean, again, that botch in the middle really took it out. And if you look at the way the card was, I mean, the first three matches were like real, I think, on Twitter, JC was flaming them. He had them all at like four or five flame matches. Yeah. So I mean, something is you're doomed from the beginning at that point. Um, right. And, 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 I, and in a, an event like this too, you know, you got five matches, you know, three matches, and then a women's match, and then a match you know is going to be an hour long. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the crowd was really out of it, and it was really quiet. Yeah, I I, I think it. I think Shayna Baszler's reign has got, kind of been snake bitten. Like they've been having consistently good matches, and uh, and then the, they just get sandwiched in between two great matches, so it yeah. makes it look really, really, really bad in comparison. Yeah, I mean, I can agree with that. I think her reign has been outstanding, so we'll see how you know the rest goes. I don't know who's up next. I mean, it could be heel versus heel with Io and Shayna. Yeah, um, 
And I don't see Candace and EO being done, though. I have a feeling uh, Candace and EO are going to be like Champa and Gargano. I think oh. it's going to be for a couple shows. I mean, you have such a deep roster down there right now. You have so many people that they haven't used yet. Like, you referenced Deanna Perrazzo earlier. Like, yep. she, has, she hasn't been on TV yet. Yep. Chelsea um, Green is coming Chelsea back. Green, yeah. I mean, so. there is a May Young Classic coming up. So, you know, yep. we're going to see all these people come out. Um, so now we're up to the main event. Uh, Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano, part three. All right, let's um, go. Let's go first ball first. How did did you like it? Did you? I was kind of like, yeah. I mean, the first ball in a two out of three falls matches is always. It's not. I don't want to say slow, but it sets the pace. Like you know, it's going to pick up. We knew the second fall was going to be a street fight, so like I was kind of not expecting much in the first ball. I did not think that Adam Cole was going to win it by DQ, though. That kind of threw me off. Yeah, well, I, it's funny. It, play, it kind of looked like he didn't think that it was going to be a DQ either. So, yeah. I kind of like the uh, the way that Johnny Gargano sold it, though. He's like, oh, well. like, And then he started wailing on him with the chair. I mean, My bad. Yeah. I mean, it was a cool thing. It was, it was good, you know, again, good storytelling. And putting Johnny Gargano in a match that yeah, he's Johnny Wrestling, but I think most people know him right now as the street fight guy. Like mm -hmm. him and Champa really changed his style in that matter. Yeah. Um, second fall, obviously, like it street, street fight was what it was. Like you, you kind of expected it to be that way. Yeah. I was I was surprised we didn't get undisputed error at all. Oh, one thing I completely completely passed over, and I had it in my notes was a. Uh, Adam Cole with a kick to the nuts. Oh, like, yeah. I was like, he literally, like, I'm pretty sure he actually kicked him in the nuts. I was like, that was a pretty rough kick. Like, I'm pretty sure AJ Styles was uh, feeling it, too. But, yeah, she played. I was surprised we didn't see anyone in the Undisputed Era. I think they're all crying in the back because they didn't win their matches. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was a street fight. There wasn't really a lot to it. And then uh, third fall, I think, was kind of a <laughs> – what – I love that third, like, when well, – I wish that they hadn't announced it. If they hadn't that, announced that's it, what I was going to say. I was – I wish they didn't announce it before, and they just kind of debuted it, and it was like, oh, it, it's coming down. Yeah, because I think everyone – everybody was like, oh, it's just going to be a cage match. It is what it is, like, whatever. And then, like, even Nestle wrote in our thread, like, oh, it's a cage match. Someone saw a cage. No one said anything about weapons hanging from it. It was, it was the Ambrose Asylum match, except, yeah. for, except for no Mitch the Potted Plant. He wasn't on there. <laughs> No, that was, it was actually, um, I really enjoyed that fall. Like it, it was unique, I guess, because we haven't seen anything like that in WWE in a while. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, since Ambrose Asylum. But uh, I mean, seeing barbed wire and weapons, I mean, my wife was just like, oh, what is that? I'm like, oh, that's barbed wire. <laughs> Did not like that that much. Um, how, how were you with the ending? Um, I was okay with it. I think we knew, we all knew Adam Cole was going to win. Um, I don't know where Johnny Gargano is going to go from here, so it'll be kind of interesting to see that. But mm -hmm. um, I he, know he I, got he the send off after, so yeah, he did. Um, and he, you did mention uh, they did miss one of the tables. They had the two tables. Yeah, he definitely overshot it, but yeah. um, still went through. Um, Adam Cole's back looked awful. Um, oh yeah, it looked terrible. But I mean, it was, I was okay with it. I thought um, both guys. Were, were really great. It was not the best out of their three matches by any means. Um, I actually thought out of the trilogy of matches, it was the, probably the worst out of all of them, to be honest. And that's coming from a huge Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole fan. Um, what for me, it kind of brings up. All right, what's next for, like you said, Gargano? But what's next for the title picture too? I mean, you have you have potential of like Keith Lee. You have some of the guys that are, are just kind of biding their time. I mean, I, Matt Riddle's obviously not going to be there because he's tangled up with Killian Dane, but um, there's a lot of potential there and a lot of excitement there. And I mean, what, when yeah. is it not exciting in NXT? Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, Keith Lee's, I mean, obviously I'm a huge fan. Follow me on Twitter. I love myself some Keith Lee. Yeah. Um, I mean, Matt Riddle would have been a good choice, but I think, you know, he's got some time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I really can't. I mean, I'm waiting for Roddy to turn on him because then Roddy, Roddy and Adam Cole would be great. Um, I saw someone on Twitter wrote uh, Kyle O'Reilly should turn on him, which would be really interesting. It would be um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, and then you look at, I mean, in the Undisputed Era, out of all four of them, the only person to not be a world champion is Bobby Fish. So 
I mean, throw Bobby Fish in there too. Like all four of them are outstanding singles wrestlers, so it could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was your match of the night? I know I told you EO and Candice was mine. Hmm. Just to be different, I'd pro- I'd probably go the triple threat. Vel- Velveteen, Dunn, and, and Roddy. I just, I love that bang, bang, bang action that goes with the triple threat. I know Nestlemania hates triple threats, but. Well, he doesn't, I mean, we don't, nobody really hates a triple threat. At least it wasn't a six-man tag. I mean, well, yeah. be real. No, I mean, that definitely was a great match. Um, I, I'm really, I, I don't want to say I was disappointed that Pete Dunn's back in NXT, because obviously him being in NXT just makes it even better. But uh, I thought he was going to get that call up to SmackDown or something. Yeah, maybe that was his send off. Who knows? Yeah, I think I, I think he's got some more time. I think he could actually be a great contender for Adam Cole. I mean, um, he's what? A, he's what? Twenty five? Like, yeah. So he's got a lot of time, and I mean, he's already on top of his game. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, your worst match on the night, obviously, was Shayna and. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm going to give it to them. I mean, it's unfortunate, and it's it's so tough to give worst match of the night to, to NXT. But I, I think I think that botch, the big botch, kind of took everybody out of it, and and the crowd was kind of gassed at that point, and they were it kind was of glaring it, too. Like, yeah. you're running the ropes and you're in a botch. Like that's mm-hmm. that was rough, on all, especially because Medium's really a veteran in that matter. Like, come on, like you should do better than that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my buddy really does not like Medium at all, so he was completely hating on this match. As a shout out to you, Aaron. Like, I know you're a Medium hater. hater. Um, any anything else you want to cover or? no i mean like that was it was a really good show overall it definitely was not the best takeover we've had in a while i think um but i think it was one i think adam cole gargano 2 from tw- nxc takeover 25 was definitely the best out of them so mm-hmm. we'll see um what do you think johnny gargano is going to do next um you know what it's it's kind of weird like before I, I was kind of thinking, like, oh, he goes to 205 Live. But now I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking he's, he's going to 205 Live, unfortunately. But at the same time, I think it's kind of a good jumping off platform if he can be the face of that. But that said, there was all, also the grumblings that 205 could be going away. So Yeah, because uh, I've read on those filthy sheets that the uh, NXT is going to be a two-hour show on FS1. So. And, and they might need kind of somebody to head that show. So, Yeah. Um, what do you think about having two women's matches on the card? Cause I, I, thought I think it's great. Weird. I mean, it's what I like about it, and it's, it's kind of something that the, um, like Becky, um, Sasha, Bailey, and Charlotte were saying is when you don't have to force it, and it's just organically there having two women's matches or a women's match in the main event. That's when you know that you've made it. Um, so I, I think it's great. And I think it's showing how strong the division is, how strong this women's evolution is. Um, I just, I think, I think they earned that spot and, and they, they delivered. Nope. I completely agree. And I think, um, NXT does it right. They have during their um, storylines, they usually have two or three women's mm-hmm. lines going at one time. Usually one's on TakeOver, the other one's on the pre-show, so it ends up being on the uh, Hangover episode of NXT. But uh, this time, they actually had three because they had the Vanessa Bourne feud going on too, so yeah. it's really interesting. Um, who do you think's next up for Baszler? I know. I think I think EO might be there, but it depends on how long this EO Candice thing goes on. I, I think it's gonna be somebody else. I think it's gonna be somebody off the board. I think it's gonna be like a Perrazzo or a or a Chelsea Green, somebody yeah. just kind of out of the out, out of left field. Just be, just because I think it might it has potential of being that I've beaten everybody here. Why like why am I still here? Kind of deal. Uh, yeah. And then when um, this music hits, boom, you're you get an automatic view. Awesome. Well, call it a day. Yeah, sounds like a good one. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, are we? You want to socialize this? Because I didn't memorize any. All right. So, <laughs> this is usually JC's thing. I, I'm gonna have to write it down. So that I'm just doing it out of the blue. So we got uh, on Twitter. We have Jobberknocker, JC of the JK, DQ of the JK. That's me. Um, Ray TJ Ray. Of the JK. Oh, TJ of the JK. Ray Ray of the JK. What What's Joe's? 
Joe Pollock, Joe 47. Pollock, 47. And then there's the real deal, B. Cox, and TV's Billy D, Billy D is his new is Billy's new Twitter handle. Um, Good job. Well, yeah, thanks. Um, you get your pro wrestling tees. Uh, get your job gear on prowrestlingtees.com. Po- podcast with JC and Nestlemania is our bread and butter, and that uh, that drops every single Wednesday at probably noonish. Uh, definitely tune into them. They're they're really hitting their stride. Uh, Jobberknocker.com. Except for they didn't give us a shout out this week. Yeah, jerks. Um, Jobberknocker.com. Uh, that's that's my baby. TJ writes for NXT. Uh, Brandon writes NXT UK. Joe's kind of utility, <laughs> does a little everything. We do previews, we do all that stuff. So uh, definitely want to check that out. Uh, download the podcast. Um, I don't remember where all the podcast is. I just get it on Apple. So just... <laughs> we're on YouTube right now. That's what yeah. matters, right? Yeah. Awesome. So, so uh, make make sure to um, tweet us. Let us know what you think. What we can change. What we can be. What we can do better. If you just don't want to see us at all, just Keep that to yourself. Um, All right. So see you next time. Download the podcast on Wednesday and and have a great week. Awesome. Bye.